week three training camp plus Colts versus Bills pregame show coming at you right now. There's no better way to get better at football than playing football. So if you want to. Taylor's going to finish it. I've always been confident in my abilities. I think, you know, I'm a guy that can go out there and I always believe in myself that I'm going to get open and, and make the play if they throw me the ball. The third. Ryan ends on shot for Pierce. He caught it. Oh, what a Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colts cast. We're here to talk about anything and everything Indianapolis Colts. I am your host, Jamal Lawrence. I will be going solo here today because I still have the luxury of being on vacation right now. Meanwhile, Eric does not, so he won't be joining me on this one. However, he will be back for us to go over the uh, post pregame or excuse me, the post preseason game here on Sunday. But guys, before we get into all of that stuff, I just want to let everybody know that football is back officially, officially on Saturday for us. We take on the Buffalo Bills at 1 p.m. And I know everyone's excited, especially with some of the news that just dropped here not too long ago, just a couple hours ago. We're going to get into that. But before I do, just want to go ahead and let you know who this episode is brought to us by. And that is going to be Manscaped. So today we're here with the sponsor for your balancing bundle of joy. And no, we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about your baby makers. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin that deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped's Platinum Package comes in. From razors to shower care, this package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. So treat the beautiful boys with the world's finest toys at Manscaped.com and use our code ColtsCast for 20% off plus free shipping. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene, hygiene routine with elite products. Inside the premium, the Platinum Package, excuse me, you'll find the lawnmower 4.0. Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2 in 1 Shampoo Plus Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Crop Preserver, Anti Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver, Ball Spray Toner, Anti Chafing Boxers, and the Shed a Travel Bag to hold your goods while you're traveling. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear and Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all the bases from head to toe and hair from to the ball throat. I can tell you guys, like I said, I'm still on vacation right now. I have that with me. The traveling pack here, I have it actually right here. This thing works wonders, guys. It has everything you need in there. So make sure you go ahead and jump on there right now. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with code ColtsCast at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use code ColtsCast. Use the Platinum Package because the gold standard is no longer good enough. All right, everybody, we know anybody who's been on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, don't matter, probably Reddit as well. You've seen the news that's come out here just in the past couple of hours. Breaking news for us. Anthony Richardson has been announced as the starter for our first preseason game this Saturday against the Buffalo Bills. Guys, I know everybody's excited as I am. We all have been anticipating to see what this is going to be like when he gets on the field. And everybody in the organization knew what they were doing. Just on, I believe it was Tuesday, Colts released that depth chart saying it was Minshew the second or Anthony Richardson at QB1. They knew what they were going to be doing the entire time. They wanted to stir up the pot a little bit, get everybody all rowdy to see what do they mean or who's going to get the start, what's going to happen. Well, Anthony Richardson is going to get that start. Um, he looked very excited when he was talking about it here a little bit earlier today. So with that being said, you know, I I, I well, got to be honest here. I think I will only see him for a couple of drives to showcase a little bit of the skill with some pretty basic plays. However, you cannot deny the hype that's going to be when he steps on that field. Everyone, I mean, I'm going to be watching on TV and I'm going to be going crazy. So I already know, you know, it's it's, it's going to be a fun, exciting time. I wouldn't be surprised to see Minshew maybe start at the next preseason game. You know, they get a chance to go back and forth. But that's neither here nor there. We're worried about that when next week comes. Right now, we're worried about this Saturday when Richardson steps on the field. And I, I just got a feeling we're going to see some fun. I expect some some kinks that need to be ironed out. You know, we, it's it's going to be it's going to be a good time. I don't think it'll be too complex for us. I think it'll be something where we can just get out there and kind of understand what the defense does, or excuse me, what the offense can do, as well as the defense, but more so for Anthony Richardson's purpose, what the offense can do with some of these basic play calls. So. I just really feel that, you know, we're going to get a chance to see the offensive line step up a little bit, hope from last year, get some fluidity through it there, get to see the stepped up wide receiver core that we have. Obviously, the quarterback position, 
the 7,000 tight ends we have, I'm sure everyone's going to get a little bit of a chance to play. Who knows if we even have enough time to get most of these guys in. But the biggest one, guys, the biggest one we have to address is the running back position because we don't know what's going to happen for this one. I mean, we think about this for a second. Right now, we're not too sure what's going to happen with the running game. Obviously, we have no Jonathan Taylor. We have no Zach Moss. Deion Jackson now with the injury. I mean, some, something has to change, you know? So, something has to change. And we know yesterday, I believe it was just yesterday, we had Cream Hunt in the building for us. So just kind of to give you that, before we go down the Cream Hunt rabbit hole and talk about kind of where that is, I just want to give a little update for Jonathan Taylor because we know that he was out of the building to do some ankle rehab. This is per James Boyd uh, when he was talking with Shane Steichen about it. Steichen said he expects JT to be back at Grand Park next week, but he didn't have an answer when asked if JT would practice. So, you know, I mean, I, I think that's within reason. I think we all kind of expect it to hear that we don't know if and when he's going to practice. Um, and of course, at this point, we know how Shane Steichen is with any injury or any issue that's been on the field. Unless it's something positive he can say, he's been short, sweet, and to the point. You know, I, I kind of like the way he does that. He doesn't really give into all of the the hype of what's going on around him. He just kind of does his job and say, this is our course of track. Here's where we stand. And I, and I think it's going to pay dividends out for us because we don't need to have the emotional roller coaster. I think it's enough right now with all what we see on whether that be when he's out there on the field or what people are putting on social media or what he's putting on social media or maybe, his, you know, his team. So I think the way Shane Steichen handled it, but just saying, you know, don't really have an answer for that. It, it lets us know we, we still probably haven't really moved uh, forward or backwards at this point. But I have to say, like I've said over and over again, I think JT will still be a Colt this year. I don't think he's going to get traded. And I think he's going to get that extension at some point. I, I have to just I have to I have to stick to my guns with that. I know it's hard, but I have to. I, like I'm a big JT fan. I know a lot of people are still upset with everything that's going on right now, but I just can't I can't not be a JT fan. I, I know what he's done for the team, you know, and I'm I'm not a selfish person. I'm not the one with the money. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, pay him whatever life goes on, because I think that he'll bounce back and he'll continue to show. But who knows with this ankle rehab, you know, he's always gonna be away whenever he's doing the ankle rehab we don't know what kind of where it's going on or the ins and outs about it but what time will tell so let's keep moving forward then with that being said because the running back conundrum continues as the colts did not land a deal with cream hunt so it was reported by espn's uh diana rossini on tuesday that cream hunt was called by indy before he even stepped foot onto the field to work out for the saints and was offered more money per source he was advised to leave and head to indy with the colts for a visit OK, so what does he do? He does just that. He traveled up here on Wednesday. But guess what, guys? As you probably read, he left without a deal. Per NFL Network, Hunt received an offer from Indy, but decides to not come to an agreement. Kind of not surprised to hear that. And, you know, th there's a lot that can go on with this on why they didn't receive, uh, you know, wait, maybe the Colts didn't give out as much money or, you know, or cream was asked for too much, whatever the case is. I mean, obviously, they didn't come to an agreement. But I wonder if there's something more behind the scenes as well, because we all know kind of the cream hunt story of how he's got to where he is right now. But for those of you who don't, I'll kind of just give a quick little brief rundown of it. So he's a former Kansas City chief running back who led the NFL in the rushing as a rookie. He was with KC for, you know, just just under two years. He has picked up for the Browns, picked up by the Browns, excuse me, and he's played for them for the past four years. So his most productive season. Uh, you know, since then was that 20 since his rookie season was that 2020 season where he racked up 841 yards, six touchdowns and average 4.2 yards a carry. But you may ask kind of what happened and what transpired from that Chiefs to the Browns. Well, he got he got some trouble. He got suspended, um, you know, and so that that's one thing where I think that I was kind of surprised to hear that Chris Ballard went after what well, was interested and even offered cream hunt. I know that, you know, we can't sit here and harp on people's pasts, et cetera, you know, and just keep going down those rabbit holes. But we we obviously have to talk about kind of what happened with that, especially when we have a Chris Ballard, who is a very character motivated guy. He says it, you know, day in and day out. He says at press conferences, he wants players with character. He wants, you know, and whether that be the core of the locker room, if you want your core of the locker room to be that way, and then you're okay for having a few, you know, outliers, which seems to be the case, especially for to get a potential Kareem Hunt signing. Sure. But just find it overall interesting at the entire thing, because, I mean, he had an incident in 2018 where he was released by the Chiefs and picked up by the Browns. Uh, he served that eight game suspension uh, and was back on the field. 
I mean, you can you can look on online and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with the incident. But it was at, a, at an apartment where he, you know, essentially just beat up this 19 year old girl. Um, and there was more to the story. So, you know, of course, he uh, the charges and everything were a completely different ballgame for what the NFL had placed within that nine or the eight game suspension. However, we know what happened. And it just seems like not something that the Colts organization would really dabble into. So I was kind of shocked and surprised when they said that. But, um, you know, like I said, there could be something else where Ballard has his core the way he wants it. And he's OK with having kind of that outlier there, you know, and, and they're not going to hold it against him. We're all human. Uh, I don't I don't condone to what he did at all, you know, obviously. But, you know, I, I think that it's something where maybe they said we can look past this, I suppose. I don't know. I wasn't there in the room, but neither here nor there because he didn't agree to the money. So we don't even have to worry about that and, you know, worry about more morals and all of this stuff. But with that being said, it kind of makes me wonder. I mean, with with that, was Ballard truly trying to get Kareem or maybe was he just trying to stir up the pot a little bit by saying we're going to offer some money to you and get you out here? It's maybe just to test the waters. I don't know. Maybe see how another free agent running back looks, maybe a quote healthy free agent running back looks to kind of gauge the Johnson Taylor situation. I don't really know. I find it very interesting kind of what happens with that. Uh, and, and I mean, money talks, obviously, who knows, there could be later on talks down the road where maybe Kareem comes back and says, Hey, listen, we can try to work out another deal. And Ballard and company says, let's try something else. Or that ship could have sailed. I just don't truly know at this time because he, he's still a free agent for us or for, for the NFL. So, but because we didn't get cream hunt Colts went ahead and just signed running back Jason Huntley a little bit later that day. And yet another tight end in Ricky Seals Jones. So Huntley is a name you probably don't really know because he hasn't really been active in the league. He spent some time. I think he got drafted by the lions, um, in which he never even played for them. And he got traded off. Uh, but he spent some time on the Steelers practice squad last year and played two seasons for the Eagles back in 2020 and 2021. And in his career, or it's not his career, but ending his tenure there with 18 carries for 70 yards. So clearly just another death piece for us. Um, and I, I, I mean, when I think about that, I think that maybe they just jumped the gun on the Huntley situation because the cream hunt situation didn't go as planned. So they're like, well, we got to get somebody in there, especially when we're, you know, we're down Dion, we're down Zach, we're down JT. You got to have something. You got to continue to have depth. So I think that the Colts will just continue to play this, uh, running back carousel for the foreseeable future because they're just I mean at this point there's just nothing you can do besides I guess just keep lowballing or just try to get any random Joe Blow off the street because this is what it seems like Ballard and company are doing right now and of course the tight end situation guys I mean I don't even know if we need to stress or talk about that even more I mean we can have a 53 man roster full of tight ends by the by the week one at this point I mean we're always having something going on with signing a new tight end and getting rid of another but um, you know, we have we have plenty in that room. We got some gigantic tight ends in that room. So I, I don't really see that being an issue for us here down the road, like the running back issue will continue to be in, uh, for us. I just really like to see them move forward and maybe try to get everything signed with JT or try to give us a little bit more of an update on it because it's it's getting a little it's getting a little frustrating and tedious at this point whenever I see we pick up this running back and then we drop him. We pick up that running back and then we drop him. You know, like we, we got to figure out some kind of consistency here. And of course, injuries are inevitable. They're going to happen. I mean, we can't really do anything about that at this point. But with that being said, you know, let's try to let's try to move forward in the right direction. And I know I would sound that sounds like, you know, a bit contradiction when I because we think about JT, who is still obviously rehabbing this this ankle. But I just don't know, guys. I just really feel like at some point, you know, you sometime when money comes into play, players all of a sudden get a little better. You know, they're, oh, my ankle wasn't as bad as it was, or this, what, you know, whatever the case is, because you kind of got what you wanted. I, again, I don't really know the full JT story. None of us do, obviously. I'm hoping that when it all comes out, we'll be like, wow, okay, this was just way more wild than we thought. But, I just really want to see some consistency there. And it makes me a little nervous going into Saturday. All those preseason game for us, you know, I don't really expect too much, but I do at the same time. I expect to see a lot of fun. That's what I want to see. It's just a fun time out there with these guys. Um, and I expect to see mistakes. But I, I just, it's going to be hard to enjoy the running back situation knowing what's at hand just because we have so many issues there. Every other position groups on the offensive side of the ball seems to have it in place. 
defense shouldn't have too much to worry about. Um, you know, we have Diggs out, we have Josh Allen out. So these guys will get a chance to get out there and see a bunch of different options from a bunch of different players on the team. I'm excited to see what they can do, especially like Juju and these guys who haven't had a lot of time to practice. So it'll be fun to see them out there in a preseason game and, and really get out there and have some fun. But really focus on, I think most of the fan base is focused on what this offense is going to do under Shane Steichen. More importantly, what is Anthony Richardson going to do under Shane Steichen? But that's going to be all for us today, guys. Listen, if you're still here, smash that like button. Give us a subscribe. We are, you can reach us on Instagram, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Anywhere you listen to your podcast, check us out. We're always there. We're going to come back here with you with the post game, uh, probably on Sunday for you. Just talk about everything that broke down within this. Y'all take care. Have a great one and enjoy it.